Hey, it's me, Dr. G, and welcome back to Friday Morning Rounds. I had a powerful show this week addressing the essential coping strategies that are needed as we all adjust to the realities of social distancing. Check out my Facebook page and my website for the full replay. Also, I want to give a huge shout out to my longtime friend, artist, speaker, and certified drug and alcohol counselor, Mr. Todd Fink, CADC. His insight and perspective were crucial to the discussion about what needs to happen now to protect both our mental and emotional well-being. You can find out more about Todd by visiting his website at www.michaeltodfink.com or at www.thegivingtreeband.com. Even though many of us have been affected in unimaginable ways, it is my hope that you still establish a sense of normalcy, productivity, and internal peace as much as possible during this time. It is quintessentially human to wonder about your next move once we emerge from this pandemic, and having uncertainties about what lies ahead is completely understandable. I've even thought about what may need to change, not just in my role as a physician, but in my broader, more foundational roles as a husband, father, man of faith, and global citizen. The overwhelming majority of us have been forced to take an unexpected pause, and this has given me time to ponder deeply on where we're at in this COVID-19 pandemic. I read a great piece published by the BBC that was written by Anthony Zercher, so allow me to apply my physician mind to some of the points he made regarding some of the highlights and lowlights of our response to the pandemic. First, the disappointments. Number one, medical supply shortages. This probably represents the greatest missed opportunity to date. It is an undeniable fact that hospital systems and frontline medical professionals, doctors, nurses, and first responders have been hardest hit. Masks, gloves, gowns, and ventilators are essential not only to care for these patients, but also to protect those individuals who provide them with care. The fact that we do not have enough equipment is dangerous, unacceptable, and places everyone at risk. As we have seen, Large numbers of sick patients present to hospitals in a very short period of time, thereby pushing the very system designed to care for all of us to capacity. Not only do healthcare professionals now have to decide who gets life-saving treatments or not, but now these medical heroes are getting sick themselves. Number two, testing delays. In one of the video blogs that I recorded a few weeks ago, I quoted Michael Levitt who said, Everything we do before a pandemic will seem alarmist, and everything we do after will seem inadequate. Not having enough testing supplies and failing to implement stay-at-home orders way earlier during the infancy of this pandemic set us back hard, and now we are seeing the devastation descend upon numerous health systems. The national health system has not yet collapsed, but it is surely being tested. Although comprehensive testing is ramping up to help identify and isolate patients, we remain behind the eight ball. There remains both access and inequity challenges across the country at the local, state, and federal levels. Now, I would like to end with a few of the successes. Number one, research firepower. It seems like every single day we try to one up the day before. Kind of like a, if you can do it, I can do it better mentality. This is a great thing. Science, innovation, and collaborative effort have risen to the occasion with the development of faster diagnostic tests, massive pharmaceutical research, and clinical trial exploration, vaccines, and therapeutic drugs. Only time will tell how fast we can move the needle toward mitigating the spread of this disease and ultimately eliminating it. Number two, the human spirit. I added this one as it is not included in the article, but I think this is critically important. It has always been human nature to show empathy, and I do not believe we have lost it. As a matter of fact, I think we are embracing it. Many of us truly care about the people we love and the communities in which we live. Just look at the multitude of support being demonstrated across this great land. Our frontline responders continue to perform their jobs to the highest of their ability, even if it means potentially placing themselves in harm's way. Young people are doing the grocery shopping for older people. Social media support groups and other technology platforms have been increasingly utilized to help us stay connected with each other in non-physical ways. This collective essence of doing something for the greater good is speaking louder 
now more so than ever. Peace out.